Necromunda Hired Gun is the kind of game that makes me appreciate when developers are given the time they need to really polish a game to a shine, because this is what happens when they aren't. It's a fast-paced, gore-filled shooter in the same vein as Doom Eternal, with a Warhammer flavor and some RPG elements thrown in. Combat is brutal, violent, and often satisfying, but also sloppy and buggy. You'll see stuff like this. Or this. Or this. Or whatever the heck is happening here. And that really sucks the fun out of what should be a great time. You can see the potential of the gunplay in the moments where things come together, especially when you find a weapon that fits your playstyle well, or you use Necromunda's insane mobility to take out the bad guys in some really awesome way. Between mid-air dashing, double jumping, and your grappling hook, you can slide across massive areas in seconds and take out enemies with extreme precision. Most of the weapons feel great, from powerful shotguns that turn people into red giblets at close range, to heavy weapons that can tear through enemies and scarcely need to be aimed. You also get a dog companion who can be summoned with a squeak toy to attack enemies, which can be pretty entertaining. She isn't the most useful in a fight, since you'll likely be moving a mile a minute and flying through the air, and your dog mostly wanders around, but at least she sometimes succeeds in drawing the enemy's attention. She can also be upgraded too, which lets her receive and deal more damage, making her marginally more useful, and there are some interesting cosmetic changes as each cybernetic implant gradually transforms your normal household pup into a robotic terror cyber doggo. And yes, you can pet the dog. All that sounds great, but in practice, there are far too many major problems with Necromunda, and the longer I played, the more they got in the way of me feeling like a badass. For one, the enemy's AI is about as sharp as a grape, and they'll mostly just run at you screaming or get caught on something and stand there until you kill them. Or worse, they often hilariously spawn right in front of you for your murdering convenience, like this. And some of Necromunda's design choices are just puzzling. For example, the lion's share of enemies can be killed instantly with a melee attack, a la Doom's glory kills, because the AI are a bunch of helpless w more often than not, they'll run right up to you while you're in an invulnerable animation. Hysterically, this sometimes leads to the bad guys literally forming a line in front of you, waiting for their turn to be gruesomely butchered. It certainly doesn't help that Necromunda has a hard time keeping up with you when things get intense. Screen tearing and frame rate dips are quite common, even on my GeForce RTX 2080 Ti, and it's at its worst when you're moving fast or in an area with especially high enemy density. I even experienced a few full-on crashes where I'd find myself staring at my desktop wallpaper and sighing at the progress I'd lost. There's no interesting story to carry it through the rough parts either, because Necromunda's plot seems doomed almost from the start. As a mercenary, your character is as shallow as can be, and has almost no personal stake in any of the events throughout the campaign. Most quests start out with someone telling you about someone who needs killing, your character replies with a short comment that usually amounts to wanting to be rich, then you're off to commit some war crimes. NPCs are equally shallow, with precisely zero memorable characters or reasons to pay much attention to what happening with the story. The plot borders on being actually nonsensical in parts, and cutscenes are filled with truly unremarkable dialogue and awkward explanations with little payoff. It's disappointing because this all takes place in Warhammer 40k's bonkers sci-fi world where humanity has grown unchecked into something monstrous and unrecognizable. Instead of using the appealing setting to its advantage, Necromunda largely uses it as decoration for mindless action and gore. There's nothing wrong with turning your brain off for a while and enjoying some meaningless slaughter, in a video game anyway, but it certainly feels like wasted potential given all the lore and world building Warhammer 40k has going for it, and Necromunda frankly needed all the help it could get. That said, the sights you'll see along the way are actually quite impressive. Each level is massive and provides plenty of opportunity to wall run and grapple across rooms as you conduct your orchestra of destruction. You'll see massive metal trains, creepy derelict structures, and even an obligatory sewer level, each with plenty of nooks and 
and crannies hiding loot to be claimed, and enemies to be slaughtered. On the other hand, the campaign is short, and ends with such little fanfare it actually made me laugh, but there are lots of side quests and repeatable content to keep you looting and shooting for much longer than the six to eight hours the main missions offer. Side quests reuse areas from the campaign and amount to little more than kill 10 of this enemy type bounties, but many are at least more challenging than the story missions and offer enough credits to make it worth your while. Necromunda Hired Gun has an iconic setting, lots of gore, and great mobility and gunplay, but it keeps giving you reasons to not play it. Whether it's the technical issues, the hopelessly dim AI, or a story that's as bland as a barn door and comically short, you have to be willing to overlook a towering pile of aggravating problems in order to appreciate what this RPG shooter does well. For more, check out our reviews of Biomutant and Resident Evil Village, and for everything else, stick with IGN.